Hello and welcome to another Shucks preview video. A lot of the games in this are going to be at our convention in a very short amount of time. These are not reviews, it should be clear. A lot of these games we haven't even played, we're just giving you a rough outline of what these games look like, how they play, and what's in the box. Some of them look quite exciting, but you be the judge for yourself. Without further ado, please enjoy Toothy Tactical Games. And we're back with more Undaunted. Undaunted Stalin Grandend. The Stalin Grad. This time we're going on holiday. Mm. Yay! To Russia. Yeah, a big bombed out car park that's going to be sad and bad. Mm -hmm. Matt, the Undaunted system is a really great little system. We've covered their games okay. previously. We covered Normandy. We covered North Africa. Mm -hmm. Didn't cover the big reinforcements box. We've maybe covered a big day. chunk of the world. We have. A in couple of continents. In fact, we've covered this game on a podcast, yes. which you can listen to, number here, but we're not here to talk about that podcast, we're just here to talk about the top line of what's in this box. Mm -hmm. This is Undaunted, the sort of horrible deck building, card smacking, skirmish game, yeah. combined with legacy elements, yeah. campaign elements. So Undaunted was the deck building skirmish game where you played cards in your hand to manipulate troops on a board, and it was horrible because mm. sometimes someone would ping a card from your hand and you'd be like, and it would, I say horrible, oh, I kind of mean that in a good way. My platoon sergeant, he dead now. He's technically not one of the ones that can die. He can't die, that. but he's probably <laughs> dead now of old age because that's how history works. But here's the thing. Previously, you'd lose troops and be like, oh no, they're dead. But this is a campaign game where if you lose some troops, they're going to get replaced with... The reserves. The reserves. Oh dear, and they're getting a little bit tattered Congratulations. You've got someone how, who's worse than the person that you had before. God isn't um, more horrible. <laughs> it is. It's nasty. But on the flip side, Matt, mm -hmm. what happens if one of your troops does really well across the course of multiple games? They might get... Killed. Upgrade, well... Promoted. <laughs> up promoted. We've got an upgrade deck, and we won't open this one because it's full of... Yeah. Spoilers. spoilers. There's yep. a whole bunch of stuff as it goes along, uh, different units getting out of different mm -hmm. sometimes new mechanics little surprises and yep. both players get their own little book which means that you sit there and read about the mission you're doing from your perspective of either a Ruskin or a German yep. um, yeah or a map book or a map imagine or you're a map a rules or a rules oh I wish I was a map I'd be an ordnance survey what about you I'd be a trail map Mm. A little hiking one. You did well though, I really threw you under the bus you because really there aren't did. that many types of maps. There are like maybe four. There might be lots of books in this game, but oh boy are they easy to read, there's not that many rules even though there's loads of books. It's pretty simple, it's very fun, it's a cool little campaign version of Undaunted. What more could you want? Mm. That's, That's Undaunted, Stalingrad. Undaunted Stalingrad. I also really like the, like, the, the bit tray. There's a lot going on. There's yeah, a lot there's going that. on. I mean, we haven't even talked about the fact that the map's really big. There's a lot of stuff here. There's so much stuff. It can get bombed. It's a big game. Bye. Bye. Tom, what do you want now more than anything in the world? To play a game of Dota 2. Well, you can't because oh. both you and I have spent a thousand hours playing Dota 2 and it's basically an addiction. And we know if we go back, we may never escape. We can't return. <laughs> we can't. You can't go back. Guards of Atlantis 2. It's a tabletop game that is kind of like a MOBA. What is a MOBA? It's like Dota 2, it's like League of Legends. Please, Tom, sit back. I know you love jungling, but don't walk into bushes. He's gone. This is a game in which you're going to play two versus two as a minimum. Just going to allow for the rustling to finish because it's probably quite yes. shocking. Oh, geez. 2v2 or 3v3. And in fact, the manual has a special kind of like expert book that just says, don't read this yet. <laughs> Wait until you've played the game because there's all these other rules and stuff you can do. But even before that, there's a whole lot of stuff going on within this game. If you're not familiar, the way it works is you have two sides which both have the champions. Over here, we have the baddies because they're red. And over here, just off camera here, really, you have the good guys being blue. What's going to happen is you're going to be moving your heroes around. You're going to be defeating the other team's kind of baddie minions pushing them back slowly until you get back to the other side and hopefully destroy the other team's base or just keep murdering each other until you've done enough murderer and the um, arbiter of the world just goes, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So as this would be a four player game usually and we only have two people, I've just set up some boards in front of us. But how it works is fairly simple. Okay. Actually. You have this deck of cards for each character. Yep. Now you're not going to actually start with all of these. This is Brogan. And also next to me, I have Tiger Claw. 
With Tiger Claw, we have this little like card that explains some stuff about the character. And then within this deck, we have some starting cards that we would find. So you've got this big deck of cards for each character, but you're actually only gonna use the ones that don't have any numbers on or just use the level one powers. And these level twos and threes are gonna come in later as you level up your character. So actually, once you've done that, you're only gonna start with a deck of five cards. Right. Which is not really a deck, it's, no. it's a hand. That's just some cards. It's just some cards. And then the way it's gonna work is each round, you're gonna play four different actions. You can see on this board here, we've got four different slots. Turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. We're going to put them on, but we're going to put them on simultaneously face down because we don't know what we've done. Now, you don't have to do them all at once. It's not a kind of planning one. Oh, okay. You've got to hate yourself, Tom, but I appreciate your uh, intuition. Mm. <laughs> My chutzpah. I like your chutzpah. I like it, personally. Then we're all going to flip them over and we're going to see what happens. Now, you've got the, a lot of the stuff you'd expect to see on cards like this. And if you're familiar with Gloomhaven, it's got some similarities here in terms of like, this is initiative. How quickly do you do things? What kind of a thing do you do? Is it an attack? Is it a movement? If you use the main action on the card, then you get to activate the little text at the bottom. But otherwise, you can just use cards to do other things but, you know, not getting the spicy bonus. So are you sort of putting a card down and that's you using it for this round and then it's kind of on cooldown almost exactly. as you then play your other stuff? So of the five cards gotcha. you have, you're going to use four of them mm -hmm. each round. Mm -hmm. But the order you use them in is going to be known only to you because there are some interesting rules about table talk. You right. can say whatever you want to a degree. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to say exactly what you're going to play, but you can be like, I'd like to go early. Same as Gloomhaven, really. You can't be coming in saying, I'm going to go at this number. I'm going to play Gush of Water. Exactly, but no. anything you say is public, so the right. other team know what you're doing. So sometimes it, it advises in the manual that you may want to leave some stuff up to player intuition, so you could try and be sneaky and clever. I see. Which is quite similar to the way that MOBAs work. Yeah, that is Even a Even though, sneaky. you know, they can't listen to you, it's more you don't have time <laughs> to communicate things and those things, but yep. in real time, that you just have to trust the gut yep. of people yep. to behave in the right way. Oh, I like that, that's cool. It is quite neat. And a lot of these systems are emulated in quite a simple way as well. The movement value on cards is going to move you at just a number of spaces. Boom, 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 boom. And then obviously your abilities for each of these characters are going to define what kind of attacks you do and how you work. There's some fun stuff in terms of whether or not you manage to defeat a either minion or another character. Mm -hmm. Minions, you just bash them. They're dead. You get some money. Congratulations. Ooh, but with heroes, you have to basically attack by playing your card and then any additional items that you might have mm -hmm. to boost that attack power. And then the other person's going to have to defend by doing the same thing. Gotcha. And then you get pluses and minuses depending on whether or not you're standing next to your little minions uh... or standing next to enemy minions. Right. So it kind of, you know, that idea of like, they're not really proper baddies but if you're surrounded by them it could they're gonna make be annoying things hairy mm. and you might lose a fight i see and yeah basically when you wipe out heroes you're gonna lose life there are these little tokens that are kind of in your little base and each one of those flips over when you run out of lives then the other team is gonna win so it's right. kind of like you can just keep wiping people out or you can keep pushing the lanes back mm -hmm. okay how do we push back into another zone well tom very easy once all of the minions have been destroyed and you can't destroy the big heavy one until it's the last one but also if you're the one that kills it your player you get four coins instead of oh. two oh, nice. and then everything would disappear from this area nothing would move forward but then you would just populate this next area oh so it kind of all moves at once in yes. these stages. it all moves and it resets and you can see that I like see. you know different areas have different pieces so it means that like the closer you are you know you kind of it resets things and moves them along yeah and i think on the more complex board it gets a bit Hairy. You've also got these outside areas. The jungle. These, you've got the jungle. We all love the jungle is massive. We've got all these areas around here defined by these like thick black lines, and it means that there's some systems in place so you can travel around quite quickly. If there's no one in the mm. areas, you can just rapidly get to an area where there's a fight, so you're not wasting a whole turn just walking through the woods going, yeah. Wait for me! I'll be there in a minute. And that really effectively is it apart from the fact that when you get coins you're going to be leveling up which means you're going to be taking cards mm -hmm. from your hand and with leveling up you're going to choose one of your colors of cards so in this instance i might have my my hit and run and i go you know what i'm going to level up to two and i get to choose from one of two abilities either combat reflexes or backstab and i keep one of them and that would then replace the level one card and i've got a slightly better ability and then the cool thing is you would then take the one you didn't use and flip the little symbol and you basically tuck that underneath your player board and it means that that's like an item. It then means that like whenever oh, you do a defense, you get plus you one a bit defense. more. That's really So every cool. time you level up something, you're going to get slightly better yeah. stats in one regard. I like that the cards change their names as well. So I go from an aspiring duelist to an expert duelist. Yes. How exciting. Right. That's, that's, a, that's what I call a promotion. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. But the thing is, right? The thing is, there's like, 
there's four characters on the table here, but in the box, I'm just going to mess up everything here yeah, so let's, we can let's, show you the box. Let's just mess up everything. This is a huge box. It is a huge box. And I've got to say, like, it doesn't quite use the space as well as I'd like it to, but I am a big fan of the organisation of it. It's very uh, enticing. <laughs> <laughs> Effectively, these little things slide out, and you can see these. Each one of these, I, I actually, you know, set this up so it basically you have the little deck of cards for the character and then underneath uh, the you have themselves. that character. So it means that the characters are taking up quite a little amount of space, but having it all like this is quite nice. And we've got one Too tray, many characters? two trays. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, and, that's, and then there's a couple more at the bottom in addition <laughs> to all of the space for the minions. But yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of different like hero characters to play as. Crikey. Um, so the game itself is actually not that complicated. Um, I thought it'd be yeah. overwhelming because of the size of the box. But Big actually, box. it's just a case of there's a lot of different things to try. But it's, you know, it, it has to be played with four or six players. I think you can play with old players with variants, but... There's always ways. It's a big box. Let's bash each other up for a while game. Yeah, it looks it. And it looks like you can make little different kind of teams to pit against each other, different compositions of heroes. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's there's, cool. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on there. And some lovely miniatures and some lovely cards and lovely art. And that is the Guards of Atlantis. Two. I did four there, but two. two. Atlantis Boogaloo. Read them and weep. Welcome to Bullet, or Bullet Heart, or Bullet Star, depending on which version you get and whether you pronounce emoji or not. This game from Level 99 Games is a bullet hell real-time shooter puzzler thingy with uh, quite an unusual set of mechanics that I quite enjoy. You can actually hear us talking about it on a podcast, but this is just a preview where we're just going to show you some of the components and explain how it works. At the beginning of the game, every player will pick one of several anime characters who they get to choose to be. There will be a special ability and a whole deck of patterns that they are into. I've gone with Marielle Martin, the eternally bored paper crafter, who can make an origami katana. That sounds normal. Now, the main phase of this game is played entirely simultaneously in real time, with everybody around the table doing the same thing with a three minute timer. You can turn the timer off to make it a more peaceful, sedate affair, and actually I kind of quite like that. It's a bit chilled out, but it definitely takes the pressure out of this weirdly fast-paced little puzzler. When you're in the option phase, the main thing you're going to be doing is drawing bullets out of this bag. Now note, I've got the bullets here and all of the tokens here are from the Deluxe Bullet Expansion, which gives you these lovely wooden tokens. The base games come with standard card ones and they're also nice, but these are obviously really lovely because they make the clacking noise. Now, at any point during this turn, you can pull a bullet out. And you normally want to do this because if you don't do it within the time, you're just going to pull all of them out anyway. So you may as well do it when you've got a little bit of control over it. I've pulled out the yellow too. That means it goes two spaces down the yellow track. This is called my sight and it's where all of these bullets will build up with any new ones that come out going along and jumping over anything that is already there. So this is all good, right? But you don't want to get too many bullets and you're always trying to fill in these patterns. Pull things out of the bag. One, two. This is interesting, right? So now, because I've already got a red three in the slot that's three down, this red three is going to go one, two, ignore that space and hit three. Oh, we're getting less and less spaces here. The red one's fine in there. We might be all right without exploding. Is anything else right? Oh, wait, that's going to be bad. Right, so we've got a yellow four and it goes down the yellow column. And it goes one, two, three, four. It doesn't quite hit the bottom. Let's see what the last thing is. Three, oh, one, two, three. It doesn't quite hit the bottom. Okay, we would have survived that round, which is a bad example. So I'm going to keep on drawing stuff from the shared bag until something bad happens. Yeah, you go, that's perfect. Now that my red column is almost entirely filled up, I've got this red four, where's it gonna go? It's gonna skim off the bottom, but it doesn't. These arrows at the bottom mean that when a bullet hits here, it actually goes here and starts killing you. These four hearts is one of the things that is variable depending on which character you've picked. Some only got two, some have got four, some have got more or less. 
along with the special ability, this is what makes things unique, but also on the other side, we have the real core of the game. So far, this has just been like kind of bullet anime bingo. But over here, we have the action board. Now, I've got seven points of energy here, which means that at any point during this three minute phase that I've already probably gone over time because I've been talking too much, I can spend one of these points to move a bullet, draw a pattern, move Mariel, this is the special ability of this person, or clear a bullet next to Mariel. There's also an action that gets triggered with a star, which gives you more of this energy or action points. Stars you get when you remove these bullets from the board. How do you remove bullets from the board? Well, if you were paying attention, I just told you that Mariel can do it when she's next to stuff, so you can spend the thing to do that. But the main meat here is moving things around to try and achieve one of these patterns. Patterns indicate that certain colours or numbers of pieces would need to be in certain places, or you'd just have to have any piece in some places. That will then allow for certain spaces to get exploded. If we've got three tokens in a row and the top one is red, then it will remove the pieces in these three segments. So the aim of the game is to pull these things out, spot these patterns, remove bullets, and get them out of your way before they fill up your board and eventually kill you. At the end of each round, you get a little power up. If you're the first person to finish up, you get the first dibs on those, but only if you finish before the three minutes are up. You also have any bullets that you have removed from your board passing into the bag of the person to your right. The better you do, the worse they are going to be doing on their next round. And this creates a kind of dynamic where the worst stuff ends up getting passed around the table as everyone has more and more problems to deal with. There's also an intensity track that goes up each round and this dictates how many extra bullets you take from the central bag at the beginning of each round. So it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Just like life. I don't really believe that, but you know. New patterns will come out each round and there's a lot of different people to play with. I was quite excited getting to take a look at Bullet Star. I've already played Bullet Heart, so we already know some of these characters. Bullet Star has an actual news reader in it who's just whose name is just your news network, as well as a chef who has a sous chef instead of the action board. I don't even know how that would work, but like cool. Also, also, all of these people have a enemy side on the back because there's a boss battle mode that you can use to play this solo or co-op. There's just quite a lot of variability in these boxes and some quite fun ideas that plays really quickly and is quite uh, that was simple. I don't know, some of the special powers are a bit weird, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's quite cleverly put together and bullets. This one is Trick Shot, a game by Wolf Designer. And this is something we have looked at already in the past in months. In the past. This is the second edition of the game. And this edition makes some nice changes. First of all, the miniatures now are really lovely painted things. Look at them. Look at them. They've got so absolutely tons of character going on here. They're very um, cute. Which is lovely. Obviously, some people like to paint their own miniatures, but I never do that. So it's very cool to just have something that has a bit of colour right out the box. A bit of pop. I'm sure there's some other things in this version that I don't know about yet, but I'm excited to find out about. There's probably, I mean, I don't really remember what they've added or what they've changed. That seems fair. You probably know about that, but if you've got the original version, you'll be able to spot the changes from a blimmin' mm -hmm. mile away. Yeah. So and I would say good. that, like, this is something which is filling up a table quite happily, yeah. but in a, in a fun way, because it's, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some things you think, why is this taking up the whole table? But this is like, it's turning the whole table into a whole... Into a battleground. Hockey pitch? Of ice. Um, and yet, field. still, the box is, is actually kind of like quite reassuringly slim. Slim, which yeah. is, uh, I appreciate that for a game that has miniatures in. What's going on? Why can't other games be like this? Please, Tom, explain <laughs> to me the ways of this edition of Trickshot. As you remember, Trickshot is a game about ice hockey. As you can see, it's a game about ice hockey. And what you're going to be doing is taking turns, smacking around a puck, trying mm -hmm. to score some goals, getting them, sneaking them past your little goalie. What's kind of interesting about this one is it's almost a little bit of a push your luck game. You've got this big old dice pool, and when you take your first action on the turn, you'll just roll one dice. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, you can take a second action if you want. 
and you're gonna roll two dice. Yeah. You wanna take a third action? Maybe three maybe dice. Do. And the more dice you take, the more likely you are to fail an action. And if you fail an action, your turn ends straight away. As soon as you fail, you're done. Yeah. You're done, buddy. Which is annoying because if you fail an action, you can't do a little line change, which is where you refresh all your exhausted guys that give you rerolls. We'll get to that in a moment. But on your turn, you can take any action from this little suite of actions that you can see here. Oh, oh, all laid out nicely. Here, let's talk about moving first. It's nice and simple. You can roll a dice and you can move a person. How far do you move them? You move them up to their speed. How fast is your people? Depends on who you've got in your team, baby. Mm. Depends on how big your hockey player is. I got a winger, a center, a defenseman, and a goalie. I've got the same. But wow. I've got different little stats on them. My one's mobile, tough, brisk, and resolute. I am tough, unstoppable, instinctive, and hardest shot. Ooh, that's, mm, that sounds interesting. Um, so you can move your little people around, you can roll to try and get them to go where you want them to go mm -hmm. to try and hopefully steal the puck or eventually shoot with the puck. Mm -hmm. That's the other action is shooting. So let's say uh, I got all the way over here. I could try and shoot by rolling a bunch of stuff. I'd really rather you didn't. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. Wait, hold on, am I in the right spot? I might have to be over here to shoot. Bam, I managed it. Ooh, I would score a little goal. But what's this little symbol here? It's an arrow. It's a reaction. It's quite a common symbol. Yeah, I know, I guess it is. Uh, but in the context of this game, it lets you move one of your people after I've had a little action. So you can move around, there's lots of reactive play where opponents can block you and that sort of thing because there's also an important rule that I've handily glossed over called mm. checking, where your actions are really restricted. If you're right up next to someone, you might have to pass yes. it to someone else to keep the puck flowing. What if you roll what you don't want to roll? You roll a bunch of rubbish. That's actually quite good. Yeah, but just imagine I rolled rubbish. Imagine oh, I rolled no. rubbish. Oh no. Oh, what one of those happened? X's. What, how could we have not seen this happen? You may spend one of your little line check mm. people. Line check? I don't think that's the right word. Reserves? Reserves? Something like that. To re-roll all of the little dice that you just messed up. Roll them again. Bam. That's looking a lot better. There's a really interesting thing as well in this game where you can fail actions in quite a straightforward way. Like you could just move. If you roll an X, you fail, you end your turn. The next player gets their turn. But there's a lot of interesting stuff going on where if you try and pass, but you miss your pass, you might end up with a situation where the puck slides away a few extra spaces, which means it's yeah. going to be sort of open ground. But then your turn ends. And your opponent has to swoop in to pick it up. Lots of very sort of kinetic, nice motion going on in this thing. Um, yeah, it's got a yeah. fun one of like sometimes people having ballistically long turns and other times people yes. having remarkably short ones. Yeah, and, and you, you, always, they want you always want to temper your turns because you know that you need to spend some of these to get some actions and keep things sort of flowing along. You don't want to end your turn with your team knackered because yeah. I mean your opponent can just bam, straight into the back. So you're going to be shuffling along these different characters in different types of positions. Obviously some people are better at fighting mm -hmm. than others because there is oh, some yeah. fighting because it's ice hockey. Yeah, one of the actions you can take is to poke, which is a nice safe action to try and get the puck, but instead you might want to try and hit someone where you just ram straight into them to try and get the puck, and that might cause a fight where you roll a pool of dice against your opponent over and over again, and every time you roll an X, your pool gets smaller until you run out, and then you've lost the fight, with different fighters rolling different sizes of pools so they can mm -hmm. last for longer in a fight. I think that a lot of what this game does is adds flavour to quite a sort of potentially, like, if you stripped away all this theme, quite an abstract experience. <laughs> but they've heaped on all this colour and theme and, and, and silliness. Um, but it's still quite tactical. There's some I mean. lovely readable stuff as well in terms of just having like the different scales, the different yes. sizes of the players, of just being able to immediately kind of get a sense of the, mm -hmm. the pitch. Just like real hockey. Yeah. Let's talk about a couple of other things before we wrap this one up. You've also got, I don't know if this is new for this edition or just always been in the game, citation needed. And we'll put some like big notes on the screen mm. right now for everything that I've got wrong. <laughs> you can't promise that we have to do it for all the videos. <laughs> we get so many things wrong. So many things we try wrong. so hard. That's the thing we're good at. Is I don't wrong. think that these were in it. No. These are arena cards which will add modifiers uh, to the game so that you can play on different pitches that will give you different things. I also can't remember if this many different uh, cards for your players were in the game last time. I don't remember. So each one of these cards is going to give you a slightly different ability so you can kind of compose a different team every time you want to play uh, to face off against your opponent. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah. I think that's trick shot. Trick shot. Yeah. We've played it before. We already liked it. This is a new version of it which has... Uh, Better things, definitely, and maybe more things. Yeah! Comprehensive information there today <laughs> from us as part of our Shucks preview We're videos. We're so good at this! Oh, facts just spill out of our mouths like cherries. Doesn't make any sense. No. 
It's the bestiary of Sigillum. The best bestiary available in Sigillum today. All your money back. Like, tick a tape along the bottom that's like, buy it now! Do 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 do! This is a two to four player game where you're going to be smacking champions into other champions to try and destroy castles. The mm. person who destroys the opponent's castle first is the winner of the game. It's quite simple, this one. It's kind of like a little skirmish game. I'm quite excited to give it a go. You've got these three characters that each player controls, and they've all got their suite of different abilities that they have yeah, so I've got, at their uh, disposal. Yeah, so I've got the Forest Sentinel. He's big old tree He is person. an ent. And my powers include Roots, Call of the Woods, and Shield of the Forest. Mm. I thought it was called, like Roots, Bark, and then just like Twigs. <laughs> the three, three stages. Holy yeah, Trinity yeah, yeah, yeah. of tr Tree... Holy Tree and... Tree... Mm. Cancel that. Yeah, get rid of that one. So the way the game works is you're going to be doing three phases, one after another, and then you'll have your turn. Then you get to have a turn. And on my turn, let's tell, well, let's tell you what happens. You're probably going to beat me up, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to try my best. So the first thing you do is you rotate this time dial one space forward, and you'll see that that might boom, boom, have this arrow pointed at these little abilities, which mm -hmm. means you can take those abilities back and put them onto your player board. So every time you use an ability, it'll go somewhere on this little time tracker and sort of be on cooldown mm. until it ticks over to get them back. Kind of nice and straightforward there. Good little way of visually representing how long something's going to take in the game. Time. Mm. Time. The, time. the wheel of time. It's crazy. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to activate any of your characters that you fancy. You've got three characters, they come in three classes, clever, strong, and agile. <laughs> You've got Aquas. I've got Aquas, Armus, and Manus. One person's is power of man, the power of arms, and the uh, power of yeah. Aqualibra. I think almost all of them, oh no, I was going to say almost all of them end in us. There's loads of characters, wow. and they all have quite silly names, and I quite like it. There's a lot, yeah. There's a so lot many. of things in a box. And you'll see they also come in their own little little tray. Oh, a little Isn't that cute? tray of... of of discs. People. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be in the final game. I will say, I think this is a prototype copy. I've been quite mm -hmm. bad at saying when things are prototype copies, but normally it's quite obvious. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're getting off topic, and this is only a little quick preview. The way that this works is you're then going to activate your characters. You've got your big major ability at the top, and then below that, you've got your two support abilities. Mm. Your main ability can either be used to just do a standard move or a standard attack, and your support abilities will do weird stuff, like create effects and that kind of thing. You've got all these tokens over here that you can see that will have positive or negative effects, depending on who you cast them on. Mm -hmm. uh, once you're done with your turn, the other player will take their turn. It's real straightforward. How do you win, though? I think this is quite neat. So whether you're going to win the game is by destroying your opponent's castle, which is this building over here. And the way that you're going to do that is by controlling towers, or catapults, I believe they're called, which are here and here. If you have a stronger presence next to that catapult than your opponent, you have control over it, and it will do a damage to that person's castle, bing, uh... slowly chipping away. I The way I described this to Matt was like, what Guards of Atlantis is to Dota, this is to a game called Battle Right. And if you've played Battle Right, you'll be like, oh yeah. And if you haven't, you should. But I don't think the servers are around anymore. I just think it adds like people fighting. Let me have a go on the catapult. Please. It's my turn on the catapult. No, you're only going to use it to attack my castle. Exactly. I might. Also, if you defeat your opponents, that'll do a little bit of chip damage to the thing as well. So you've got two ways of kind of roughly winning the game, but you're racing to the same goal, destroy your opponent's castle first. It's quite a 3v3 brawlery thing. 3v3 brawlery thing. And I believe you can play it 2v2 on a four-player map, which is in this box. Let mm. me just get that and we'll star wipe to it. Oh, that's just spicy. Whoa. Is it the same on both sides? I think it is. Yeah. There you go. Ish. That is Best Year of Sigilum. It's a little beat em up brawlery thing for two players or four players. Maybe even three. Probably not three. No. Not for, not, not for three. That's fine. Be what you're going to be and own it. Matt. Yes. It's time to be space pirates in space. What? <laughs> yeah. You thought that they had pirates on land, they put them on a spaceship. Wow. It's freaking crazy. This is Starfinder, Pirates of Skydog. Yep, from Gale Force 9. For two to four players, it takes about an hour to play. And we're pirates doing a little heist on this spaceship that's mm -hmm. been hanging out at a spaceport. We are inside of it, and we are going to steal it, but we'll have a little competition between us as to who's the best pirate of them all. Who's going to steal it 
best. Exactly. Who's going to steal it the most? Who's going to accomplish as many secondary objectives as possible? Hmm. That's what we're going to do. And do we do out. that by just rushing around the ship, fiddling around <laughs> with things <laughs> yeah. in our piratey ways? We're going to charge around, interacting with as many objects as possible. And whoever interacts with the most objects is going to be the winner. I've Basically. Played, I've played video game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, here we are. Here we are on the on spaceship. The ship. Of funds. We've got two characters. We've got you, Quig, and me, Altronus. Altronus. And you'll notice that at the start of the game, we have this little player board that is covered in these little slided tiles. These represent our abilities, and we will start with a different spread. We've ended up with pretty similar ones to start with, because I haven't picked the characters in a way that's like actually interesting. But that's uh, fine. But if you you're playing picked, someone else... You just pick Quig because you said it reminded me of... It looked like you, me? Yeah, no. Is this a rat? You just... You sort of embody kind of like, you know... I embody a rat? <laughs> <laughs> so we start with different abilities, different characters. Our characters have their own abilities. We start with different little panels on here. And you'll notice they're flippable and upgradable. We're going to be mm. doing that throughout the course of the game. As well as gaining new abilities that we can slot. I just went from into zero hands. To two hands. Two hands. Now that's an upgrade. Two hand rats. What we're going to do is we're going to first do a planning phase where we draw some loots and some schemes in any combination, as long mm -hmm. as we have two of them. Loot is going to help us upgrade our little space pirate person, mm -hmm. and schemes are going to help us complete these objectives, which are the ultimate goal of what we're doing on this ship. Right. Then we're going to have an... What, oh, sorry. Before that. Oh, I nearly got ahead of myself there. We're going to put these four energy cubes mm -hmm. on the abilities that we want to activate. So at the start, no choice. We've just got four abilities. But as gotcha. the game goes on, we'll have to pick and choose what we want to do. Got it. Then we will go back and forth in the action phase, taking these actions one by one. So I might take this action to do a little move. I might take this action to do a little bit of scheming. I might take this action to do a little bit of interacting interacting and then you'll see around the ship you have some spaces that will give you opportunities to collect loot some spaces that will give you opportunities to collect schemes and some spaces that will let you interact with them to do little bits and bobs if you manage to do these objectives you're going to get a bunch of end game points called glory which are these big green ones and you can even ask your pals for some help doing these schemes but you'll get fewer hey, points. Hey, help me eliminate the security forces. <laughs> I can't read these upside down, so hey, they could be incredibly help me sinister. Install the back door into the system. Yeah, I'll do that any day. I feel like that's a one person Pow. job, personally. Well, you get much more points, many more points, if you do it on your own. If you share it, you get secret shared points, which aren't quite uh, as good. Okay. Also, okay. what's going to happen is between rounds, we're going to have guards that are going to flood into the ship that are going to make it harder for us to do things. You'll see this little minus mm -hmm. two modifier. Mm -hmm. A bunch of cards in the game have little skill checks at the bottom uh, down here, so you can bin scheme cards to increase your skill checks, but things like encounters might have like rolls. This one doesn't. These are all bad examples. I should have maybe rigged the deck. Here's a good example. This bad boy. That one's a good example. Has a 14 Quick, plus. Disable the engine safeguards. Do it now! Quickly, because the guards are coming. <laughs> <laughs> also, over the course of the game, what we'll have is if you are in a room with a guard, the alert level is going to rise, making certain checks a little bit harder and spawning more guards into <gasps> the ship. <gasps> I'm doing it wrong, but I don't care. <laughs> Everyone's panicking. Eventually, what we're also going to do is we're going to get closer and closer to launch, which is this final space within the ship where we steal the ship. And then whoever did the best heisting is Capitane, the winner. There's a couple more really cool things that I thought I'd point out mm -hmm. uh, just before we finish this little preview. You also have, if you take damage from the guards, oh no, I've taken damage. What happens? Do I die? No. You just lose some of your critical functions. You have <laughs> these, these ability tiles here. You're going to roll the dice and you're going to cover them up with these. Oh, so Tom, you've just, you've just described basically most of my 30s. <laughs> I'm Am so I going to die? No, I'm just going to lose some of my critical functions. <laughs> I'm just going to not and be I'm making peace with that. quite as good as I used to be. So that's not good. My whole board has gotten covered in X's. Yeah, and now you just can't do them anymore. I can't. I've lost my hand. I've lost my legs, and all I've got is little box plus two. Or ability to or scheme. <laughs> scheming. That's a cool little thing. And the other cool little thing I wanted to point out, you also have these little secret backer cards that will give okay. you a little bonus ability depending on who you've collected. Who you get one of those at the start of the game. Banking you. It's Aslanti de Facto. Uh, I, mean, I, I started reading that as if it was a name, but actually it's clearly a, a, a race. I'm not familiar with the... The setting of With this. the law. No. Although I would say, I think the coolest thing about this is uh, the little dice. The little out of focus skull on the dice. A little slightly out of focus skull. Here we Try go. Here we go. Skull. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little uh, 
Some nice little dice. Yeah, some really nice production on this one. Uh, I really like the fact that you're sort of doing this cooperative thing, but you're kind of doing it competitively. Yeah. Pretty neat. That is Starfinder, Pirates of Scar... 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 It's hard to Scar pronounce. Scar it's hard to say. Sky Dock. It's not hard to say. Sky Dock. We're just... The pirates of the Sky Dock. Sleepy. Me and Matt had a little nap before this one. Can you tell? It was nice. Bye. Bye.